Hello and welcome to the Hyper League Dawn of War Soulstorm Tournament 2017. I will be your caster for this round. Angry Crow is my name. And skirmishing is the game. We're going to load up a replay that you might have seen of our Memich versus General Havoc. Round one, game one. We have best uh, two of three. There are a couple of different win conditions, but we are ready to go. This is a Cape of Despair four player map. Uh, Space Marines by General Havoc, and here we have Memich as the Necron team. Um, immediately opening up with a plasma generator, just trying to get my power resources up for this unit, just give myself something to work with. Um, immediately after that, we're generating as fast as possible a bunch of Necron warriors. They have a cost of three, but it's in the cost of three people, as you can see his capacity, the squad cap is eight, and that's going to give Memich something to work with across the map as he builds up his resources and tries to kind of line up a defense. So let's switch over really quickly to General Havoc. Now here we have General Havoc just kind of waiting at his stronghold, double checking his controls, making sure he's got everything going. This is the first match for a lot of people. This might be their first time playing Dawn of War and it's so great that the Hyper Leagues exist in order to facilitate a place for new players. It's a wonderful word, facilitate. I don't know. I like it. <coughs> Anyway, let me turn off the Fog of War for a second and see if we have any movement on the map. So coming from the north quadrant, or the northern corner of the map, you can see that these Necron Warriors are already on the move. Um, what you might find interesting is that if you're going to get these free strategic points, these uh, ones that are close to the base, the Builder Scarab comes through here. They look super cute. <laughs> and it does take quite a while to take over a strategic point. I believe that um, each army has a different effect on these towers, but the idea being um, we can use this as a rally point, we can use this as a requisition resource um, to build more buildings of the game, which is, I believe, this blue number on top. All right. And now we have the capacity to start readily producing more and more Necron Warriors. And um, if I travel over to here, you can see Mavich almost walking into the opposition territory. I'm not sure that he can see them at all. If I turn Fog of War back on, no, it looks like they cannot see each other. Nope, the Necrons walk right up to his base and walk away, seeing no activity, no expansion. They're not interested in that corner of the map and so spread out. And that gives General Havoc a little bit more time, um, without really knowing, um, <laughs> to start to get his units together, build up some scouts, maybe start getting the chance to poke around the map, um, taking over you know, with his first unit of scouts, the strategic point over here, also increasing his income and resources. Um, but notice how he does not have an income for power resources. So we're spending a lot of resources to get a force commander, which is a very powerful unit. We've just secured this position. Let's open up that Fog of War and have a look at what Mamage is doing right now. Uh, so you can see that the Necron Warriors here have started to expand. Using this button down here, you can add more squad members. And he's queued up a couple of adds just as they go because these units are safe. And each unit of three that he um, generates has a capacity to grow, I think, maybe to twice their size. So let's follow these dudes around who seem to have no kind of conflict. Um, but it seems that, uh, like, according to the movement over here on this side of the map, that Memage has discovered that he can't be on the eastern s or the western side of the map, probably isn't on the southern side of the map. And so we're going to send another group here just to double check. So these Necron Warriors are going to go out, maybe check the middle. Now, you can't really do a lot of base moving or manipulation in this game. It's very much more about um, <coughs> controlling uh, the power and capabilities of like enemies rolling against each other. There are slag deposits in critical locations scattered across the map. For example, the center of the map here, which is a critical location, um, will actually give us a training time bonus, allow us to produce units faster, and that area of the map can be contested very, very rapidly. Now, 
Mavage is curious if he's here at all because he's just scouted the whole map, as you can see in the chat. And so he's taking a second glance again as uh, these new Space Marine units and servitors or builder units for the Marines are starting to go out into the world and figure out what's going on. Now, as this is happening, he gets ambushed by that detachment of Necron warriors, taking out his few scouts who had just captured this control point over here. And um, now Memage is certain that there are people over here to battle with. And <laughs> in a fit of defense, H General Havoc is looking to try and recover that damage. But they've already made it to his base. This is out of control. Very quickly, sneaking those skeletons behind the back door. His commander is left out in the open. Fortunately, this is a very powerful unit. And watch as he just smacks these guys away. Now... The Space Marines haven't been noticed quite yet as they're chipping away at this unit, but at this point they are very much outnumbered. Um, there is not a queue for more squad members being added as we can add five more to this unit. Unfortunately, it's too little too late. It appears as though the Necron Warriors are outnumbering these units very, very much. I mean, what is that? Three to one. Done and done. However, we have here... Our force commander holding up pretty well. Very, very strong heavy weapons um, against very, very light. Um, even though they are heavy in infantry, this unit, um, there isn't very much that he can do on his own. A force commander really needs a unit of marines or scouts even with him um, to do the most damage and distract from oncoming attacks. And notice how low his health is at this point. We're talking about 10% of his health is left. And another unit of Necron Warriors is already coming in to clean him up. At which point, we're trying to repopulate our base. But Memage is already on the attack and he has three, count them, three detachments of Necrons. Well, this guy's barely alive of the original that attacked. A full squadron here. Another squadron coming down from the top. He was able to produce another group of Marines, but now those Marines are becoming sandwiched in a Necron warrior assault, which is absolutely destructive. And so, <coughs> down goes his unit generating force. If I have a cool look at General Havoc, you can see that he's trying rapidly to produce more units from his stronghold. Just something. Servitor scouts and space marines, chaplains. Um, but he does not have the ability to tech up, and now his servitors that are just left out in the field are slowly being cleaned up as Memage divides his forces into the local control towers. Um, clearly, he has an opportunity to go for the total annihilation of General Havoc this round, and I'm fairly certain he has it. I mean, it a miracle comeback this would be, but it really doesn't look like there is any kind of coming back as he has reverted to the towers. He's looking for some stragglers out here in the field, but it looks like these guys are going to get away. <laughs> and um, it seems like that is very much it. I don't know very, I don't think that you can really rebuild in this game. I do think that it's nice to have a scout leader just kind of out there trying to survive, but as it stands, Memage is pretty much done everything that you need to do. You know, he saw an opportunity and he just stepped on it. He took a clear shot, um, really capitalizing on an opening in General Havoc's defenses. Um, and that's definitely the story of this match today. In the arid plains of Mars or some other Mars-like planet. So round one, definitely, we'll go to Memage. Um, a quick match, but I think also pretty fair, a good warning, a little bit of light play. You can see Memich had built up a bunch of tech here at the end, um, just in case, very cautiously. You can see here that there's a forbidden archive that is almost complete. Um, and that is wonderful. Let's go look at the score screen really quickly, just to kind of recap. Um, there isn't much for graphs in this game, but we can see as a quick overview um, that in terms of military power and resources spent. 
Mehmet already had this tech built up, so he didn't really influence it very far. Um, had a very, very strong lead on cutting down the military forces, the scouts and the marines that were out in the field trying to capture these control points and n not really teaming up to defend their commander or to really work together and hold off the Necrons, which are a very, very serious force. I mean, we're talking a lot of units very, very quickly um, scattering all over the map. So maintaining that, you know, watch out for Memage. He is not going to hold back on you this year. Um, you might you might be able to track him down, but that'll be it for round one. Do stick around for round two of this match, and we'll see if Memage can clean up or if General Hol... Good gosh. I want to look at this guy's name again. And if the good General Havoc can hold his own in round two of the Dawn of War Hyperleague 2017.